Welcome back to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Sweet Tooth Season 2. It's finally here. Finally dropped all eight episodes ranging from an hour to 45 minutes. But is it as good as the first season and will you enjoy it as much if you enjoyed the first season? Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to help this channel. I hate asking that, but it does help trying to get above the YouTube analytics. So please do that. But let's jump in to talking about season two. A new wave of the sick has hit Earth while Gus, Wendy and other hybrid kids are imprisoned at the preserve by General Abbott and the last men in order to find a cure. Meanwhile, Jeppard and Amy work to free them from Abbott's clutches. The reason why season one worked so well for me is that it was a journey adventure. When we meet Gus, that little dude's got hope coming out of every pore. There's a little bit of an introduction to his story, where he's living in his park home in amongst the forest, uh, Yellowstone Park, I think it was. And when we meet Big Man, that journey is where the story gets really interesting. In fact, their relationship is what kept me being drawn back. Thank you. You know, the fantastical element there with the hybrids and the story of the, the thing that has wiped out Earth, you know, it's very close to home, <laughs> I guess, we, you know, just haven't come through COVID. But for me, what drew me back was their relationship, even though they it was often estranged. You wanted to know the, the I guess, the background story about like Gus's origin. And we learn a little bit about that in season one. A miracle happened. But the end of season one leaves us in the place where we think Big Man is dead. Gus is captured and put with the rest of the hybrids and we leave us for a couple of years going, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? And you've probably forgotten what's happened. So now you may need to do a little recap, watch that last episode to remind yourself where all our characters are. When we start, we get those moments where we're introduced to the characters again. There's a nice little introduction to all the new hybrids that Gus, I guess, now has to live with in this kind of place that was the zoo, but is now Abbott's military base, basically. And he is trying to control everything. Uh, he reminds me so much of Dr. Eggman. So nice to meet you. The question is, for whom am I narrating this? I don't know if he did for you. The the black goggles, the bald head, it, and even the way he speaks is very over the top. So it reminded me a lot of Dr. Eggman. Portobello Purgatory. I struggled to get into the first episode. Uh, and even like the, the, the second episode, halfway through, I was not feeling it because there's no journey at adventure there. Really, this second season is about the escape or helping Gus and the hybrids to get away from Abbott. We have a number of other characters that are still very much involved. We have Bear. She has a little separate story, but it all comes together with like a massive crescendo in the end. We still have Aditya. I think I tell you pronounce his name. Aditya Singh and his wife, Rani Singh, who the reason why he's doing all these experiments is because he's trying to save his wife. So we have an understanding there. We have uh, James Brolin, who's still narrating the bits. I love his gravelly voice. I think it's a nice little add-on. We also have Neil Sanderlands, who is General Abbott. Until now. There's a big theme going on in this series, especially season two, about family. To make that family whole again. And what is family? You don't turn your back on family. You know, what makes family? It's about family. It's not just blood. It's who you surround yourselves with. And we see dysfunctional families. This is your family. It's on display and we see uh, families. This is my family. Learning to be families. My family. So all these little kind of caricatures of what family is. I don't have friends. I got family. And that is in amongst the world dying with the sick in its second wave or in the next biggest wave. How people learn to cope with that and then how hybrids have mixed in with that. And so here we have this story of these hybrids basically prisoners or being used as guinea pigs. I would say the hybrids themselves, they look for the most part really interesting, but there's some iffy CG there. Like the elephant CG is good, but you know it's CG, you know it's not real. Sometimes when you have series like this, when it's fantastical creatures, you can get away with it a bit more because they're fantastical creatures. Here we have creatures that we know in amongst the humans. So you're, 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 you're still kind of going, but that doesn't quite look real. So they get away with a lot when it's practical, except when it comes to one character. And you know the one I mean. They do mix a bit of CG with him, but mostly animatronic. It reminded me a little bit of like of the Muppets. You 
have to put a sense of, okay, that's what they're doing to showcase what this thing is. But you also know that it's animatronic and puppeteering because you see the movements just aren't real and, and, and moves like a puppet at times. I think I like practicality of it, but I just not sure it worked all the time. It did take me out of, I guess, the, the absorption of the story and the adventure that they were trying to get me in. That's just like one little niggle because I do think this was a very good season, even though it took me a while to get into it. And even though it isn't necessarily a journey for Gus, it is a journey for others. So what are the other characters up to? And you get to see the world through their eyes. And when we get to the rescue, because you know that's going to be a big part of the arc, it's as exciting as you expect it to be. But I thought maybe that was going to be the crescendo. No, the ending has a bigger more exciting path for you to journey on and i love the kind of coming together then we've introduced all our teams and our, our characters and the willingness to kind of fight back i love the journey that the characters go on and so when we get to the family unit but you never turn your back on family that is now the new family unit at the end you're so much on board with these characters and that really comes down to moments that the dialogue and the director is willing to take so we're not having to have a lot of action all the time there are some really great dialogue moments or scenes of drama that for me is the best in the series even though i love the adventure i love the fantastical nature of the story the cinematography the sets are excellent wherever they go it really places you in that world it's believable like it's a lived in world lived in characters but the drama between gus and big man but you know between bear and who she finds herself with uh between the husband and wife there it, it kind of a strange relationship everything that the doctors had to do in order to keep her alive even to some extent general abbott and his family unit that i thought was very interesting so you have these moments of climactic battle battles that are throughout and there's even a couple of really interesting hand-to-hand -hand combats uh, and and then action sequences but it's the acting and the drama mostly with the adults i think are good when it comes to the acting of the younger ones they're fine but there are kids and not all of them are fantastic actors i don't think they need to be they basically just need to play captured i think gus is doing a great job at portraying his character and wendy i think uh, plays off of him quite well all in all i think it was a great second season i had to work into it i think i still enjoyed that first season a little bit more but i am looking forward to where they're going to go for the third season if we get a third season i think if they leave it here it'll be disappointing because really they haven't answered the big question and where it's going does seem like it would be another journey story which i'm into those always work quite well especially when you have pre-established story and backgrounds for your character then you can just go into that adventure and still have them learn things along the way i'm gonna give this is four nicholas cages out of five <laughs> and you got one I enjoyed it in the end but it took me some time to get there i think it finished off well there is some violence no nudity as far as i can remember uh some language and um intense scenes for younger viewers sometimes really intense depending on the episode so let me know your thoughts and feelings thanks so much for watching but most of all until next time remember live long and tuesday